What's up, St. Louis? We back with another one. We downtown at Mosaic. Sometimes you gotta stand on business, man. Been hearing a lot about him. Let's see I'm what's gonna show y'all how to do this. Billionaire brothers. Yeah. The struggles of a mogul. Take care of the fam. I notice I need more dough. Seen the best of my future in a photo. Stamped on my mind like a logo. That's what you call branding. Super flash time pass shots. Be candy. Got jet lag time difference. What's going on, St. Louis? We back with another one. Today we down here at Mosaic's with my boy Mose. Hey, <laughs> let's get it. Uh, tell them a little bit about yourself, how you got started, uh, how long you been doing it, and first of all, where you located at? Hey, we located right here in the heart of the city of St. Louis. The home of St. Louis, right What's here, up? baby, right here, downtown St. Louis. Give them the address right quick. Uh, we right here, 200 North 13th Street, right on the corner of 13th and Pine, where you can find us. You can't miss us. Big mosaic signs all in the window, baby. Check them out. How, how long you guys been open? We've been open now a year and four months. A year and four months. So y'all kind of coming off the uh, the end of COVID a little bit? Yeah, yep. Yeah. Um, tail end of it. Uh, you know, we we opened up in November, uh, you know, a year and four months ago. And when we opened, we did like a little surprise thing for my sister because it was kind of like in conjunction of some family things we had going on that year and so we wanted to make it real uh instrumental and make it real um you know like family ties to like what we believe in with the core of the restaurant uh and how we do things so we had our surprise birthday party here to like kick it off man we had this thing packed out yeah. you know to the window to the wall <laughs> and so it was good how you get started, man? What was the inspiration behind it? Uh, man, it's a long story, but I'll try and keep it as short as possible. <laughs> you know, I, I grew up in my um, auntie, my mom's, my uh, grandma kitchen, you know, in our family, you know, uh, we have a core belief, you know, uh, you know, the women in the family, they, they teach the men how to cook. My grandma used to have a saying that, you know, these women these days, they microwave women. <laughs> And so, uh, you know, she used to make everybody get in there and learn how to cook. And, you know, I used to pay attention to detail of every little thing they would do. And so it kind of just stuck to me. And then at one point, you know, I started going to my grandma, my aunt's house, like visiting them. And um, I just started cooking for them. You okay. know, yeah, they, they taught. First thing I learned how to uh, cook was fried chicken and a cast iron skillet. Mm. And um, then they taught me how to bake from scratch. So. You know, I, I had the best of both worlds, you know, uh, cooking and baking. Okay. And so um, that's kind of where I got started. And, you know, as I started to grow up, you know, I started realizing, like, you know, I like people and, you know, I like doing things and celebrating things. And so, you know, I, you know, pretty unique with bringing people together and bringing people together with food. And so that kind of just stuck to me, but I had an idea of that would just be my retirement job. And all of this I'll be doing when I retire. Mm -hmm. And so when I was working for the military, um, I was in New Jersey uh, working at a base up there and I had some really good friends and we all used to go out a lot. And when I used to go out, you know, one of my things was, you know, buying bottles and showing love and buying drinks and stuff. And so. Um, you know, everybody called me Mo, but she was like, no, nah, I'm not calling you Mo, I'm calling you Mosaic. And I was like, okay, that's that pretty catchy. And it was it was before Rick Ross came out, officially, officially. Oh, uh, Rosé? Yeah, before okay. we knew it well and all like that. Um, and so she was like, no, nah, I'm calling you Mosaic. So it just stuck with me, but she never gave me a meaning to it or why she said it. She was like, that's just what I'm going to call you. So mm -hmm. that's what she was calling me. And so... Uh, you know, probably a little over uh, two and a half years ago, I was like, man, it, it's time for me to do something different. And so, you know, I've been working for the government for many years. And so, you know, I called my pops, I called my sister and was like, hey, I gotta do something different because this just ain't it. And, you know, the pandemic had hit and certain things about how we were operating and, and going about things with people changed. And so I just took a leap of faith, I left. Um, you know, and I, 
came home and everybody wanted me to cook. Oh, okay. And so I was like, okay, well, man, I ain't finna be cooking for people for free, you know what I'm saying? Because everybody was like, man, Mo, come cook, come do this, come do that. Make it make sense. And uh, so I was like, nah, let me go ahead and get my LLC and get everything going. And so I started catering. And so um, after doing an event for about 300 people for this church, everybody was like, man, you gotta get a restaurant. Like, where y'all located at? You know, and so I was like, you know what? I gotta find a place to cook out of because like my catering went from me starting in February to in May. Like I was ridiculous booked. Mm -hmm. I mean, to the point where I was asking my dad, my sisters, uh, my brother, you know, my brother-in-law, like, hey, I need help y'all, like, come. <laughs> I can't do it all. I mean, I, I have like two, three jobs booked in one day. And so, it, you know, it got to be a little taxing. And so I was like, you know, we got to find a location. Like, what y'all want to do? We always talked about opening a family business when we was kids, which I want to do. And so, you know, that olive branch was extended out to my brother-in-law and his family and his friend. And, um, you know, that's kind of just how we all got started because, you know, everybody had this dream to create some type of family business. And so that's kind of how we got started right there. And before you knew it, boom, here we are, right here at Mose, baby. <laughs> that's what's up, man. And you, you're from St. Louis, right? I'm from St. Louis. Okay. Been all through St. Louis. That's what's but, up. North County, uh, Moline Acres, where I uh, stayed at. Okay. But I ran all through North County with just about everybody. And so I went to uh, Riverview. Okay, shout out to Riverview. Hey, state champs, baby. <laughs> class of 01. Oh. Er everybody in North, North County know what it is, that class of 01. <laughs> you play? You played any sports in Oh uh, Yeah, played football. Oh, okay. We, we, got, we got down and dirt. All right. Yeah. That's what's up, man. What you think uh, Mosaic brings to the St. Louis food industry? Uh, I would just say we, we add to the the rich culture that we already have. Okay. Um, and being a black owned restaurant, I think um, us being right here in the heart of downtown St. Louis, we added an infusion and we kind of put, put a lot of things on notice when it came to the city and like what we do how we do it um you know i got a saying you know where all tasteful creations begin and so you know when you pop into st louis whether you're here in st louis or you visit in st louis you can't help but find us and when you find us you're like man this is what st louis is right here and so you know that's what we want to be for st louis and that's what we're all about here you know and it's just not always about the food, it's about the customer service too when you come here. You know, we have a level of, you know, uh, expectation, you know, with how we run this business that, you know, we want everybody to know about the food, but more importantly, we want to know everybody. We want everybody to know about what it's like when you walk through the door. You know, it's a vibe, it's an experience. You know, you get to meet the bartenders at the bar, you meet the waitresses on the floor. Uh, even the cooks, if we're not so busy, we all pop out. Right, you know, right. everybody's like showing love and trying to make sure everybody gets the best of the experience, you know. And so I think that's what we bring to St. Louis. Um, you know, most importantly, you know, we got some great dishes, you know, we got some great drinks. So we do bring a little pop and a little flair and, and, and a little um, different variety of like things, you know what I'm saying? So. Yeah, so I think that's what we bring to the city of St. Louis, baby, and we only getting started. Hey, uh, you, you kind of, I was going to ask you what, what does the experience bring, but I mean, what type of experience you have here, but you just kind of explained it. And for me yesterday, I really like the vibe, man, and, and your staff, okay. your staff, they professional, man. I, I noticed um, it was two guys came in, they wanted to sit at the bar, it was kind of full. It was like, what what, what can we do? Yeah, somebody ran and got two more uh chairs where they can sit at the bar, you know what I'm saying, without it being any fuss or anything like that. Staff, making sure we was cool and all that, I like that, man. It's definitely a good experience, and the vibe was cool. Y'all had people with their families, and then, you know, I don't know, we had a lot of people from out of town here yesterday, and it, it was not, it definitely was a vibe, man. Yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah, that's what, that's what we do. We try, we try and make it an experience for everybody. No matter if you've been here 30 times, or if it's your first time, we try and make it an experience every time you come. What kind of uh, 
what kind of people do y'all have come through here? Like uh, any notable influencers, celebrities, anything like that? You know, it's kind of hard to tell because, you know, we have so many people that come in here. You know, you could get a politician that come in here. Um, the mayor pops in from time to time. Okay. Uh, we get influencers from St. Louis, from out of town. Uh, we've had a couple celebrities pop in on us, you know. So you never know what you get when you come here, you know, because it's all sorts of people that come here. So yeah, it's definitely a, a nice location. So you, they, people coming from every which direction. I know that from the city. Um, what what style of food you guys make here? Man, we have everything. We have breakfast. Uh, we do lunch, we, uh, brunch, which is our number one hit. And then we also have dinner also. Okay. And so, you know, some of the uh, dishes on each of the menus, you know, you get you get like chicken and French toast in the, in the breakfast, okay. uh, pancakes, eggs, you know, all that good stuff. Uh, lunch, you know, we have uh, a couple healthy choices for people too. So, you know, if you don't want anything fried, you know, you can get you a wrap. Okay. Um, you know, Caesar salad. Okay. Uh, so we even have um, some choices on the menu where if you don't eat meat, you know, you do like vegan burger, you oh, know, okay. uh, stuff like that. And then uh, brunch, you know, that's kind of the most popular one. So, you know, you get you some catfish and grits with some shrimp, uh, chicken, and, chicken and shrimp pasta, which is two of the dishes that are starting to come a um, lot very trendy here lately. Uh, Cause everybody love love their catfish here right, in right. St. Louis, and um, but the most popular dish on the menu is the fried salmon pasta or the fried salmon grits. Not, you know, uh, those are the two salmon. most popular signature dishes that a lot of people come for, okay. and so they we sell out a whole lot of it. Yeah, and then you know dinner, uh, you know you get you a steak, uh, you get some crab cakes, um, lobster mac and cheese, seafood mm. pasta. Um, so, you know, those are some of the dishes kind of highlight the menu, the various menus that we have. And you got me getting hungry, dog. <laughs> <laughs> what was, what's your favorite dish on your menu? Uh, my favorite dish to cook on the menu, I would say has to be the seafood pasta because I'm highly allergic to seafood. Okay. And so I can't have it. And so to see the um, expression on people's face when they eat it or when I bring it out, um, they just be like, man, and uh, you know, it's it's, you know, I'm just like, okay, I'm I'm living through you, you <laughs> eating this, but I can't have it, and so it's it's good. Yeah, that's what's up, man. You must be a hell of a cook to be cooking something you can't taste. You know what I'm saying? Man, you know the secret to it is um, when I first really got serious with cooking, I was like, I gotta learn how to cook seafood because if not, I ain't gonna be successful. Right. You know, in this business, and so. I would get my sisters and and, um, and brother to be my taste testers. Oh, okay. And so every time I cook something, they were like, "Man, it's good, bro. How'd you do this?" And like, and so I'm like, "Man, you know, I always would make my base or either, you know, just how I season. It just seemed to always come out the right way." Well, um, for anybody trying to start like a business or get into the food culture or food industry, what would be your advice for them? Um, I would say do your research, uh, find out where you can find your niche at, you know, I think everybody has a creative expression um, or some type of creativity that they can bring to the food industry, period, you know, it uh, doesn't matter if it's the same unique dishes, if you got a secret sauce or, or something secret that can make things pop. I say stick to it, stick to your brand. Um, I also say, you know, try not to start out too big and do it too big. You know, um, starting out small is okay. You know, I met a, a restaurant owner, owner in New Orleans. He's from St. Louis. Okay. He uh, opened a place in New Orleans and he started small. Right now to this day, that small, place is outpacing his three other big places. Mm. This place is making multi-million dollars versus the other. That the same so, that the same uh company though? Same, what? same, same company. Um they got different concepts at each one. Okay. But that one's the that one's the hub. That's the home. That's where all the originality is in. 
And so it's nothing wrong with starting small, y'all, at all. Start start small so you can do it big, okay. you know, and be patient. You got to be patient with it because in this food industry, it, it takes a lot of patience. It takes a lot of time. And so, you know, if you're interested in this and you really want to do it, make sure you do it the right way and, you know, use some of the techniques or the advice that I gave. What does the future hold for uh, Mosaics? Like you thinking about expanding or just staying right here in the city? Um, I would say right now at this very moment, you know, the focus is on this location right now. Um, it's, it's just about where it needs to be as uh, far as uh, business-wise. But I will say that um, the goal is always to expand. Um, I think we have a really good thing here. Uh, we have a lot of investors, a lot of people from out of town who've been coming trying to recruit us. Uh, but, you know, to take those uh, steps, you know, um, it takes a lot for you to do that. And so right now we're looking at mainly here in St. Louis or the surrounding area with um, any type of expansion or any um, next business concept that we do, we're looking right here um, because the goal was to build it up here at, at home and then, you know, start looking at anything else outside of that. And so um, it's coming soon for anybody else that's not from St. Louis that sees this or hears this, but, um, you know, we're taking our time being patient with it because we want to do it the right way. Right, right. You know, we don't want to rush and then next thing we know, you know, we, we fumbling, you know, and so we, we don't want to do that. So any locations that are coming, we definitely want to make sure we do it the right way. Um, and we definitely want it to have the same love, creation, um, and everything that we put into this one with the next one. So, you know, it's just like birthing a baby, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you got to make sure that baby right in the womb. So, yeah. you know, we, we the next baby we birth and we try to make sure it's right. That's a good analysis. Maybe birth that baby right, you know, before you send it out there into the world. Got to. <laughs> Got to. What would you say is the uh, hardest thing about being in the St. Louis food culture? Or just the food culture, period? Uh, I wouldn't say it's hard, honestly. Um, I would say you just have to be up on your game. Because nowadays, you know, you got social media. And so... Social media influences a lot of what you do with business, period. And so, uh, you know, I met an a influencer uh, who came in and he was like, man, I, I wasn't expecting it to be so open with open arms. And so I was like, well, you know, that's just how we do things here. You know, it's, it's different. And he was like, you know, I've been to other places, especially, you know, black owned business, and it always hasn't been open arms because everybody's scared of the reaction of social media or this, that, and the third. And so, uh, you know, I, I just say that to say, you know, with with this, you're gonna have influencers. You're gonna have people, period, who just come into the business. And so, you gotta remember, they spend their money, and they spend their time in here, you know, and they, they're, they're trying to help your business. You know, everybody's not out to hurt your business. Right, right. You know, but if there's something wrong or, or like, I'll give you an example. If an influencer comes in and, you know, they're like, hey, my bread's hard, you know, or, hey, my experience was this. Take that feedback and put it into your business and use it, you know. Uh, you know, so that, that that's, that's probably... What I would say is kind of like what some people may say is hard is that, you know, a lot of social media drives what they do as a business when you open your doors. Um, and then, you know, the other thing too, you know, um, you know, recruiting in the right staff, you know, um, plays another part too. And so, you know, we've had a lot of success with recruiting and recruiting in the right type of people. Uh, but, you know, at the same time, too, you still are always evaluating because your business is growing. And so with that, you know, you kind of just have to be mindful of, do I have the right type of staff? Do I have the right amount of staff? 
Um, you know, it, it's just a lot of factors that play into the whole business part. But I think social media, like I was saying, is probably like the biggest one. Um, but it's not hard, you know. And plus, too, as a business, you have to be out there. Because you can't expect to open these doors and these customers just going to walk through. Right, right. You know, you got to put boots to the ground. Right. You got to get on social media yourself. You got to reach out to people like the radio station. Reach out to some of these influencers and say, hey, look, hey, I, I see you coming to the area. Come to my restaurant. You know, give them some food or probably give them a drink or something. Let them do a review on your restaurant, you know. Um, some of these influencers are influencing in certain areas where people wouldn't even think to probably come to your restaurant because it's not the type of restaurant they would go to. But because that influencer has influence, they influence the flux of people to come and check you out. Yeah, they can reach a crowd you can't get to. Right, right. And so you have to use all those avenues. And so, you know, it's work, of course, you know what I'm saying? But you, you just got to put the time and effort into it, you know. And so I don't consider it hard. It's just it takes a lot of time and effort. And so you get what you, you, you get out what you put into it. Right, right, right. Well, uh, what's your social media? Hey, you can find me at Chef underscore Mose, M-O-Z-A-Y, on all platforms, TikTok, Facebook, Instagram. Y'all go follow him, most definitely pull up. What's uh, what's your hours here? What's, what would you say is the most busiest um, time to come through? Or the busiest time for you guys? Uh, we're open Tuesday through Friday, 11 a.m. to 10 p.m. Uh, on Wednesdays, it's always Wild Wing Wednesday, so we have uh, wing specials on Wednesday. Okay. On Thursdays, is Ladies Night. Uh, we always have a live DJ. Well, we're getting ready to implement uh, Poetry Night, because had, I've had a lot of ladies asking about Poetry Night. And so, that's that's going to be a big hit here coming. Yeah, and I love poetry, too. The poetry taking off, uh, I mean, where it's getting more popular, I've been noticing. Uh, on social media here in St. Louis though. Oh yeah. yeah. And then on Thursdays, most definitely ladies get 20% off. They get half off on all signature drinks. So it's a real good night. Ladies come out and check it out. For sure. uh, Friday is uh, more of the date night Fridays. And so we always have a live band here on Fridays. So uh, it's first come, first serve, make you a reservation. You go on mosaicrestaurant.com and always make a reservation. Uh, Saturdays, and Sundays, we're open from 10 a.m. to 11 p.m. On Saturdays, we do breakfast, lunch, brunch, and dinner okay. all day long. Um, and on Sundays, all we do is brunch. If you are looking for a spot on Sunday where it's it's one of like the hottest and premier spots for brunch, come right here. It's, it's I tell you guys, it's definitely a vibe on Sundays, um, and I would recommend you make a reservation if not the lines are long and it's it, it's it's always a packed house on sunday so if i was here yesterday definitely a vibe man. it's our busiest day of the week on uh, sunday oh sunday is okay. by far the busiest day of the week we we triple any output of any other day we're open during the week sunday fun day that's a thing here in st louis there it is yeah well uh what y'all got popping for 314 today Oh man, we jumping for 314 day. We got the radio station here. Um, we got my brother, uh, Reggie Dub is gonna be in the building. Reggie Dub. Uh, he gonna be spinning the ones and twos down here from okay. 11 to four. Um, we got the hometown crew, uh, uh, not hometown, the home team uh, from the radio station gonna be uh, here. Oh, Shorty now? Yeah, Shorty, okay. Chris, Tiffany Fox, Andrew Caldwell, they all gonna be in the building. Come check us out. Um, it's also, uh, gonna, we got a pretty nice little concept, so I got 314 day coupons uh, for just about everything. Um, I got uh, some 314 day um, tacos that I'm going to have for $3.14, um, so it's going to be real nice, man. Come check it out. You're going to be working on 314 hey, day. I'm here, I'm here all day, so <laughs> if you want to see Chef Mose, I'm here all day, baby. I'm usually not here all day, but I will be in the building all day on that day. Getting it in, huh? Getting it in. Um, what's your favorite thing about St. Louis? Uh, man, what's what's not to be favorite about St. Louis? I I, I, I I would say it everything about St. Louis. You know what I mean? Like it's just 
you know, it, it be times I still, I go ride through the city from time to time, you know, when I have a chance and just, just ride through the city and just look at the city and see how much has changed from when I was a little kid to how it is now. You know, going down uh, Martin Luther King, Goodfellow, you know, riding through the west side, riding through the north side, you know, seeing some of the redevelopment. Even here downtown St. Louis, you know, we used to be able to go down to the riverfront. And now looking at that and seeing how they've changed all of that, you know, and so they've made the, uh, the arch, that whole riverfront now into like a historical landmark. Right. You know, it was it had always been a historical landmark, but it's more of a historical landmark now. You know, I went maybe last year and I was like, man, this looks nothing like how it was when I was a kid. Yeah. And so, you know, they've changed a whole lot of that stuff. And so, um, you know, riding through the city and taking, even taking my kids places. Yeah. And I'm like, man, I remember when I was a kid, it used to look like this or it was like that. And so, yeah, you know, Hey, that's that's one of the uh, my favorite things to do because it like it changed so it's way different. My kids don't know nothing about what we knew about. You know right. what I'm saying? Right. Especially like the arch, the inside of the arches looks looks way different. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? And plus too, like you know, being being right here downtown St. Louis too, I think it really just means something to me too. Um, you know, with you asking that question because. You know, I remember growing up and coming downtown St. Louis and then going downtown East St. Louis. And, you know, at one point, we had a lot of predominant black-owned businesses. And so, you know, it means something to me, you know, with you asking that question, because that's what I want our people to see. That's what I want these kids to see coming up, like, okay, it's a black-owned business and, you know, them being 30, 40 years now and being our age and they like, man, Mosaic's still right there. I remember when I was a little kid and I was going there when my mama took me when yeah. I was a little bitty kid. You know, um, you know, it's it, it's things like, you know, it was a young lady uh, walking one day and she had her granddaughter with her and, you know, the little girl was crying and my sister went out and grabbed her and asked what was wrong because it looked like something was wrong. And so come to find out, you know, she had just got her uh, her granddaughter, you know, for some various reasons, and the little girl was hungry. And my sister, a nurse, and so my sister was like, nah, bring that baby in here. And every time that baby get hungry or something, have her come to the restaurant. And so I came out of met her and I was like, man, anytime on the weekend you get hungry, you come here. You say, hey, Chef Mose told me to come here. That little girl's been here about four or five times. I make her the same meal pancakes, bacon, eggs. So all she wants when she come in. And so that's that that question just means something to me because I want everybody in St. Louis to have that same level of love because there's so many people that always say like we don't break bread together. Yeah. We don't show love. I try and do business with everybody. You know what I'm saying? You know, I have a business with uh several black owned non for profits. Um, you know, shout out to my girl Gwen. Uh, she has her uh, woman's empowerment thing every year, and I try and make a point to uh, be a part of that, you know, stuff like that. And so, you know, but, you know, as I said, that, qu that question just means a lot to me, and I, and I want it to mean a lot to other people, too, from St. Louis and people who visit St. Louis so they can see that same thing. That's dope, man. Um, and, and, and one thing about this, like, that since we've been doing this, I like that. A lot of the owners, they're not just involved with their restaurant, they're getting involved with the community and giving back. So that's, I think that's real dope for y'all to be doing that, man. Yeah. Uh, and, and that little girl, she gonna remember, she gonna, she gonna remember oh, that. Most yeah. Yeah, yeah most for death. sure. Uh, y'all got anything else popping this year besides 314 Day? Uh, yeah, so we have, um, we got a lot going on, man. We, um, you know, we're right here on this strip right here, right on the, you know, the corner of 13th and Pine. So, <clears throat> so it's gonna be a lot going on. Uh, we're trying to put together several different events, uh, collaborate with other people. Um, it's starting to get warm, so we do have an outdoor event, so we're gonna have some outdoor seating and outdoor activities going on oh, out there. <laughs> um, we, uh, the next next thing we have coming up, uh, we have uh, brunch with the home t uh, the home team, 
And so we're going to have Tiffany Fox, Andrew Caldwell, Charlie Prince. We're all going to be down here for an exclusive breakfast. Get your tickets. It's out online right now. Um, there is limited exclusive VIP tickets for that event. And so that's going to be real nice. I'm going to have a different uh, brunch menu for that. So it's, we're going to change it up a little bit for that day. Uh, when, when is that? That's gonna be April six. April six. Yeah, okay. April six. Yeah, that's uh, and that that should be hitting uh, social media, um, Sunday after three one four day. Okay. Yeah, so that should start blasting real live and going real strong. Um, and we got a lot going on. Tune on, with, tune in to the radio station. You know, we locked in with the radio station, so they are gonna keep the city hot and pumping with all our um, events and everything that's coming up and that's gonna be going on. Okay. Yeah, as well as well as our social media page as well. Give them the uh, social media one more time. Chef underscore Mose, M O Z A Y, all platforms, TikTok, IG, Facebook, you can find us all over. And the address? 200 North 13th Street, right on the corner of 13th and Pine. We downtown, 314. Y'all come check out Mose, Chef Mose. Appreciate you a lot, man. All right. Thank y'all for the interview. Appreciate We're doing it. this for the city. Lou, we got one. Hey, we in here. Sometimes you got to stand on business, man. I'm going to show y'all how to do this. Billionaire brothers. Yeah. The struggles of a mogul. Take care of the fam, I notice I need more dough Seen the best of my future in a photo Stamped on my mind like a logo That's what you call branding Super flash, time pass, shots, be candy